In this video, we discuss using object-oriented techniques. It's important you've got a solid understanding of the basic programming concepts and different data types before you watch these videos. We covered those in SLR playlist 8 and 13. Although you could learn the theory independently, it makes much more sense if you're able to work through these videos and their examples by implementing their concepts in real program code. These videos are therefore designed to reinforce and consolidate the understanding of programming techniques you will need for the exam, rather than teach you these concepts from scratch. Remember, the way to become a good programmer is by programming, little and often. You don't become a good programmer simply by watching videos and studying theory. So you may be confused as to what this specification point relates to, as after all, you've already covered this in SLR 7 types of programming languages. Back in that SLR, you learned about the following OO concepts, classes, objects, methods, attributes, inheritance, encapsulation, and polymorphism. Now rest assured, there's nothing new to learn on this topic regarding object-oriented programming theory. So if you haven't done so already, you should watch the videos in SLR 7 before proceeding. So if there's no new theory to learn, then what is this specification point intending to teach you? Well, object orientation is one of the many valid programming techniques we can or could use to solve problems. And that's why it appears here. By placing this specification point here, it allows the exam board to ask questions such as, when might you use object-oriented techniques to solve a problem? The exam board may also present you with a problem and expect you to be able to spot that the use of object-oriented techniques is the best way of tackling it. So to clarify, there's no new theory to learn in this unit. The theory and the checking of your understanding of object-oriented programming techniques will be assessed in your unit one exam paper. Whereas your understanding of when it's appropriate to apply those techniques will be assessed as part of your unit two exam paper. Okay, so it begs the question then, when designing a solution to a problem, when should you use OO techniques? Well, simply put, almost any solution can be developed using a variety of OOP techniques, but that doesn't really help you with answering the question. So OOP works best in situations where you can encapsulate and model entities as objects. Doing so allows you to define objects as classes and better understand how they relate to and interact with each other. Let's consider a simple button on a graphical user interface. It has a number of properties. It has a size, a background color, a font color and style, a location on the form. Various events can be associated with a button. It can be clicked, it can be hovered over, it can be double clicked, it needs to be drawn on the screen. It makes a lot of sense to model a button as an object. The button object will then have its own properties, which in OOP we'd call attributes, and have its own actions that we'd call methods. This object can also send messages to other objects to inform them when an event has been triggered, say being clicked. Using object-oriented techniques is a great way to develop graphical user interfaces. It's no coincidence that object orientation was developed in parallel with the very first GUIs. Computer games were another good example of the use of object oriented techniques. Games typically simulate, through abstraction, the real world. Usually they encompass players, characters, enemies and hundreds of other items. These items can all be easily modelled and captured as objects. Their interactions can be defined in methods and the characteristics can be classified as attributes. 
Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. What do we mean by object-oriented techniques?